Glenn, thanks for joining us uh, to answer some of the academy players' questions. Um, we're going to start off with Austin from the under nines, who's, uh, who's showing us a few of his skills in his back garden. Hi, Glenn. I'm Austin, and I play for Luton Town Academy under nines. My strong fit is my left foot, and I love scoring goals. Here are a few questions for you while you're stuck at home. Firstly, how do you keep fit in this tough time while we're at home? Well. Obviously, we can't go out for longer than an hour exercise. So I've actually just tried to schedule the day. I do a bit of yoga in the morning, meditate, try and get out for a walk or run or cycle. So just try and keep things, I don't know, just try and keep things. It's a hard one, isn't it? Because we can't do much and you have to sort of stay in. But the boys, are, the boys, the S&C boys have given us programs to do. So just try and stick to that, really, and then add little bits and do a bit of core when I'm indoors and that. Obviously, you've got the ball in the background. That's not there. That's not meant to be there. I've not put that in there for the camera. But, yeah, just do, just do, uh, yeah, just do general bits, really. Secondly, what was your childhood like? Which team did you play for first? Well, I had a really good childhood, actually. Thanks. <laughs> um, what team did I play for first? I, I actually, I think I've told this story before, but I actually went to train with a team when I was about eight, I think. Went to train with a team and started crying because I didn't want to go and join in with the boys. I think I was a bit nervous. But I loved football. I loved playing football with my dad and my brother and that. But just joining a team, I just got a bit nervous. So my dad said, all right, don't worry about it. We'll go, just let's leave and come back in a year if you're ready in a year then fine come back in a year and absolutely loved it tournaments everything I think the first team I played for was AFC Strikers then I went to a few tournaments and I played up a few a few years to the, at the tournaments went to Hove Riverveld and I got signed by Brighton when I was 10 and then stayed there until 20. And finally how did you get to the position that you are now playing for Luton Town? Here's a goal for you. Well, I know this might sound like I'm chatting absolute quango, but when I was a kid, I was actually a centre mid, like an attack, like box to box. Yeah. So I used to like scoring the goals. I think I used to be the one scoring the goals and winning tournaments, scoring headers. Do you know what I mean? So when I was a kid, I used to be a centre mid. Went to Brighton. I think I went to Brighton as a. They maybe put me different positions because then you're just doing it for fun. You're just enjoying playing wherever sort of thing. And um, I'm, I mean, you're doing it for fun now as well. But then it's like you just put anywhere, aren't you? And you're just enjoying wherever you are. If you're playing, you're just enjoying it. And then I think when I was under 12s, maybe I remember him, Wayne Potbury, his name was, and uh, he put me centre mid. And I think I scored two goals. I thought I cracked it. I was buzzing. I scored two goals. And then I think because I was a bit tall and everyone, and I like to like tackle and actually defend, I think they put me to centre half. But then when I was growing up a bit more, they said I was too small for centre half, which I didn't really agree with. But now I've found a position holding mid and I'm absolutely loving it. And I did say, I think, when I signed my contract, Two years ago, if I had a run in a position, I felt like I could do... Because all I want to do is learn. I just want to learn. If you put me anywhere, I just want to learn in that position. So now I'm playing as a holding midfielder and I'm getting a chance to play there regularly. It's, yeah, it's, that's, what sort of, that's what sort of got me there, I think. For me, as, as a centre mid, that position is literally... That holding position is... I think is perfect for the way I play because I like breaking things out. I like passes. I don't, I'm not too bothered about, well, I want to get better at going forward and influence the game a bit further forward. I want to get better at that, but I'm, my main job is to actually break things up and play simple. Do you know what I mean? And I feel that's what I do. And having the boys behind is just, it's like that extra, just that extra shield, I think, in the front of the back four. And I think, as football's like evolved, sort of thing, that's a position that people actually use. And Nathan used it, and now the gaffer now is using it. So 
yeah, it's sort of perfect for the way I play, really. Hi, Glenn. It's Trevor. What advice would you give to the youngsters coming through the academy? I think the main ones just work hard. and Obviously, there's a lot of influences, especially now. I think you just got to, if you want to be a footballer, your sole focus needs to be that, I think. You've just got to put your whole your whole self into doing that. Obviously, as you as you get older, there's other things that come come about. But if a boy coming through the academy, for me, work hard, enjoy it, enjoy every minute of it, even the bad times, because there's obviously going to be bad times in for everyone. But I think just enjoy it and work hard. And if I think if you really want it, then things happen. For me, that I think for me that's how it happened. Hi Glenn, Matt Rowley here. Um, I just wanted to know, how did you stay positive whilst you had your ACL injury? <laughs> I don't think I did at some point, to be honest. There was bad days, there was real bad days. Um, I don't know, it was just... Like I said, I didn't stay positive for the whole thing. So when I went, I don't think I realised that I was being a bit of a... I don't know, there was some times where I was being someone that I didn't want to be, but it was... I don't know, just it was because of the situation. So I weren't positive all the time, no way. There was times where I was really down. But to try and stay positive, I just thought it is what it is. I got over it quite quick. There was a day where they told me that it happened, where it was a real dark day. But I, thought I sort of got over it quite quick and then just looked for other things. So for me, being injured was just... I can work on other things I've never done before. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, maybe I just, my focus went to another thing. And then as you get closer and closer, then that's when it gets more frustrating because you can see that you're nearly there, but really you're not there. So you've just got to try and tell yourself, just be in, in that moment that you're in at that time. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's really hard. But I feel like I'm a different person now than I was when I got injured, and it's just been a it's been a good journey for me personally, to be honest. And what was it like on the sidelines? Like, how did you stay positive? Try to like cheer on teammates. Cheers. It was good. It was good. There was a few times where I got a bit annoyed, but no, it was good. It was because the boys were doing so well, so it actually made it easier because they were doing so well. I didn't really have to think about because obviously we were going for promotion. And when you're out of it, when you're playing, you don't really think about getting promoted. At that time that the, my ACL happened, you don't really think about it. But when you're on the sideline, you're watching it and you're thinking, oh, we could do it here. We just need a little, like, just do that. Do you know what I mean? It's harder when you're on the sideline. But I was just enjoying watching the boys play because they're doing really well. And, yeah, it's just really happy to see us get promoted. But it was hard as well. Don't get me wrong, it was hard. Hi, Glenn Ben Stevens here from the under 18s. Where did you have your scholarship and has it changed much from today's scholarship? I did my scholarship at Brighton and Martin Hinchwood was our like director of football sort of thing for the youth team. And he was amazing. He was he just kept us all on the ball. We had to do jobs all the time. And he sort of like for that stage of my, my career, him and sort of Vic Bragg and they they got you real grounded and got you ready to sort of make that next step. For me, it was into the 21s. And yeah, I think just doing the jobs and that. And I don't know, the boys at Luton definitely do jobs. And I don't know about other, other places, but it might change a little bit. But I can't really say if it has changed because obviously I'm not in that situation now. But for me, it was just work hard on, just try and learn every day, work hard, do the jobs, because then that gets you ready for or you feel more privileged when you sort of make the step up when you don't have to do that, do you know what I mean? I think they do that at now. I think they do jobs and all the boys do the boots and I think they're a grounded bunch, to be honest. So I couldn't say if it's changed or not. But I really enjoyed my scholarship. Hi, Glenn. Got a couple of questions for you. Our first one is, what's the best stadium that you've ever played in? What's the best one? Newcastle was good. Because I didn't realise how many fans were going to be there and there was loads. And then that, Luton took the whole top end there. It was so good. It was a bit overwhelming, actually. And then Bournemouth actually was quite good. I really liked that. 
ground was nice, pitch was nice. So them two are probably, yeah, them two are probably the best ones. I played in Italy. That was quite a nice stadium. There's a few fans there. I can't remember what that was called. But yeah, the Newcastle one was good because we took so many fans. And even to Bournemouth, we took so many fans. So them two are probably stand out. The second one is, what's your most favourite game that you've played in for Luton? Cheers. It's been a couple. It's been, we've had a good time. We've had a good time since I've been here. Um, what's my favourite game? I think I said it before, Swindon away. When we won, what was the score? 5-0. Five 5-0. Nil. Five, five nil. Yeah, it was a good day. Because when was that? That was around Christmas, wasn't it? Uh, Boxing Day 20, 2017, I think. That was a great day. Yeah, that. Obviously getting promoted at Carlisle was a good day as well. Um, yeah, I'd have to say the Swindon one, I think. Actually, the Derby one this year, I really enjoyed as well. So that was my first game back at the Kenny, wasn't it? Was it? I think so. Yeah, that was, that was amazing, actually. That's probably, that probably tops the other two. Yeah, that was unreal. I loved that. Did the fact you were playing against Wayne Rooney have anything to do with that? Yeah, I was a bit starstruck, actually. Well, I was ma majorly starstruck. Just tried to, like, I don't know, I tried to just get it out of my head that that's Wayne Rooney. But it's, it didn't get out of my head because it was Ray, Wayne Rooney. But yeah, that was that was unreal. That was a good day. Hi, Glenn Specs here. Do you got a couple of questions for yourself? Um, my first one is on a build up to a match day, what do you tend to do in terms of like eating, getting uh, ready physically and mentally? And try not to think about it now because I used to think about it too much and try and have a routine, do this, do that, be this certain way, get in this certain zone, blah blah blah, and. And I've learned to not just take it in my stride and just so no one time's really the same as the next game. Do you know what I mean? Whereas it used to be structured, do this, do that, do this. Now I just kind of take it as it is and yeah. I do do like pre activation before every game now, obviously for my knee. But yeah, that's that's sort of it really. Just try and take it as far as it is. And my second question is Obviously, myself coming into the first environment next year. Have you got any tips for myself? Cheers. Just enjoy it. Show what you can do, I think. He knows what to do anyway. He can talk to me anyway. He can talk to me at the training ground. He didn't have to talk to you on here. Nah, he's a good lad, him. I really like him. He, uh, yeah, just do, just do what you normally do. and Try not let the... Just try not let it phase you, I think. For a young kid, because that's, that's what people see in you. If you're, I'm, I'm, I don't mean overconfident, but if you're confident as a young boy, I think that's what makes you stand out, I feel. Right, Tyrell from the under-14s has uh, asked four questions. Hi, Glenn. Hope you're well. Just got a few questions to ask you for regarding your football career. So, number one, what is your main attribute that you have that allows you to become the great player you are? That's nice of me. Um, I just like to think I do. I try and try my hardest every game and try and defend well. I don't know. Keep the ball moving. Also make mistakes as well. So, I don't know. I just like, what do I bring to a team? Maybe that bit is still in front of the back four. Number two, if you're not playing football, how are you spending your time? Oh, uh, to be honest, yoga's, I do yoga like every day now. Started meditating, which I feel really helps. Um, I actually read now. I couldn't have told you about four months ago that I've ever picked up a book in my life. But I think since this lockdown, I've been reading and, that, and I've read a whole book. I'm on to my next book. Loving it, mate. I love reading.
What specific things do you do to improve your playing style in midfield? I think drills where you get on the half turn are really good. So you're just aware about everything. I think that's a really good one. Because being on the half turn is actually underrated in football, I think. It's tough to get on the half turn and play forward. Really tough. So if little drills that I do. Um, yeah, just little stuff like that, really. And I think with... Because I feel I read the game quite well. I think with the games you play, I think you get better at that. I think that comes with experience of playing games. where you. So I think that's sort of... You have to sort of play games to get that. Some people got it, at, maybe at a young age. But the more and more, obviously, you learn about football, the easier it becomes where sort of positioning-wise and that. But the drills... Being on the half turn, playing into little goals, yeah, they're good for the centre mid, I feel. And finally, if I was making my pro debut alongside you in defensive midfield, what would be your advice to me just before kick off? Just enjoy it. Just enjoy the experience. That's, that, will live you, that will live with you forever if you get that moment to play in the first team and get your debut in the league. That will live with you forever. So, just got to enjoy it. I think that's what... So I'd tell a, tell a young boy to just enjoy it, yeah. Then I'd say all the best and we'd be out in the tunnel. <laughs> Can you remember what a senior pro said to you before your debut? Well, it was at South End. It was against uh, Coventry. And I know that was my league debut. My debut for Brighton, which was a dream come true. I, didn't, I don't think I could even take anything in because... That was just a dream come true, so I'm not sure I remember if anyone has actually said anything to me, because I do remember my boys being in the crowd, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Cheers for the question, boys. Stay safe, stay at home, and uh, we'll see you at the break soon.